Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very, very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I would very much like to continue on with our journey, our discussions, our explorations, and our discoveries with respect to the recent releases made by the Criterion Collection during this year of 2021. And that brings us to a film which has been designated by Criterion under its release at spine number 1097. This is a work described as being from the year 2000, and it is from the filmmaker Gina Prince Bythewood. And the name of the work is Love and Basketball. This is the work which is from 2000 and it is from the extraordinary filmmaker and artist, writer, director, Gina Prince Bythewood. And it stars among others in its incredible cast, people like Sanaa Lathan and Omar Epps and Dennis Haysbird and Alfre Woodard and others. This is a really remarkable, emotional and very clever and very multi-leveled uh, drama, romance. It has hints of a very a sincere type of love story. There's a focus on the basketball and the nature of the sport and how it affects each of the characters, both in terms of a physical feat as well as the emotional and psychological uh, investments that need to be made throughout the entire terrain of basketball and indeed love. Love and Basketball is the name of the work. And it is, as I say, a very extraordinary and uh, remarkable work from Gina Prince Bythewood. So in that brief description of the work Love and Basketball, I think we can already get a hint or a sense of what the plot or story is. And it is, it says it in the title, and indeed the title is therefore significant, Love and Basketball. To be more specific, we are focusing in on two main or central characters, one being Monica and the other being Quincy. And uh, we see them, or we are introduced to them, uh, from a, an early age in terms of their childhood and their uh, initial meeting and interactions with each other. And then we understand almost immediately that there are a number of connections that connect these two characters, Quincy and Monica, which will bring us through to the entirety of the film through its running time. So what are some of those connections that we see off uh, from the very start? So first is we understand that they have this passion, this very intense and uh, r very inspiring passion and focus uh, with respect to basketball, the sport. And we understand too that from a very young age, each is incredibly gifted, incredibly skilled on the court. And we see them indeed uh, uh, play in these uh, in sort of backyard uh, uh, you know, garage uh, court type of, of play. And that also brings us to the next connection between the characters, which we see immediately, which is they are close in proximity, not just in terms of age, but also in terms of space, physical space, because they are next door neighbors. And due to certain circumstances, which we are introduced to early on, they become next door neighbors. So they have this passion for basketball. They are of a similar age. And also they are... Uh, close in proximity both in age and also in terms of physical space and that leads to further aspects of the drama which as I say will play itself out throughout the uh, various structures of the film. Incidentally speaking of basketball the structure of the film is in this idea or uh, based upon uh, divisions or quarters first second third quarter or fourth quarters 
which in turn uh, correspond to, a, say, a cycle of the lives of these particular central characters, Monica and Quincy, and also they mirror or correspond to the cycle or flow of a basketball game. So uh, this is, I think, a very clever uh, and ingenious way to further uh, intertwine or embed the notion of basketball into the very fabric of the film, the very atmosphere and the very uh, essence of the film. Uh, but also going back to the characters and the way in which they are connected, another way which we see them connected is uh, in terms of their say uh, interactions vis-a-vis -vis themselves and also with their own families and their own backgrounds and we see too that they are each having to confront or deal with or otherwise attempt to handle various challenges that emerge in their respective lives and one of the sources of those challenges comes from their family dynamics uh, respectively so for instance in particular with the character of say quincy uh, when we see him a little bit older he is portrayed or played by omar epps we see his relationships with his parents in particular his father played by Dennis Haysbert, and this becomes a very key, central, direct plot element as well as a, a character motif or theme uh, that uh, I think uh, illustrates or otherwise shows the, the psychological depth and complexity uh, that the story arc uh, carries us through with respect to the Quincy character. So that's one family dynamic that we see. As far as the other central character of the work, Monica, we also see her fam family dynamic early on, uh, as I say, carried through throughout the film. In particular, the relationship that she has with her mother, played by Alfred Woodard. And here we have a very interesting uh, source of, I think, family dynamic tension and also the idea of maybe different types of personalities and different backgrounds uh, and sometimes even in terms of, say, a, a close familial connection like a mother-daughter relationship, there still might be this notion of, say, generational divide or even character divides, which aren't in any way uh, inherently antagonistic, but that's just the way sometimes families are. Are. And given those, say, similarities and differences, the family is still family. And so I think that is a, a really strong type of, of tone and nuance and uh, commitment that we see uh, really developed so wonderfully in the story arc or arcs that have to do with Monica and her family in particular. For example, the relationship that she has with her own mother. And so we have the family dynamics that are also portrayed. And of course, with family dynamics, we also have the lives of the characters themselves. And we see them, as I indicated earlier, we see them starting from a very young age, and then we see them in a next cycle of their lives. And all the while, we can return to the idea of of the title, Love and Basketball. And one of the things that's so amazing and remarkable about this uh, particular uh, cinematic work uh, and I maybe hinted at it or I tried to hint at it a little bit earlier when I was talking about the the uh, the way in which this film is organized in terms of quarters first second third fourth quarter uh, which is mirroring a, a basketball game I think this is a real uh, this is a very significant, uh, not just in terms of structure, not just in terms of format, but also in terms of theme and style and content, and also the general atmosphere or environment. One of the remarkable things about how Gina prince Bythewood and company uh, tell this story or set of stories is that it, it, it really comes from a, a kind of a, a place of, uh, of, say, authenticity from, in particular, the story of Gina prince Bythewood herself and, and how athletics and, in particular, basketball was really important to her. And this is something that is revealed in some of the supplements that are included with this Criterion release. But this is something that's very important. It's almost like it was always there. Basketball or the love of basketball was always there. It just, it just is. And for these characters, Monica and Quincy, and indeed the people that we meet, uh, the various teams, the coaches, the whole life. This is a way, this is, it's, it's, it's a way of life, but it seems so much more. It seems such like a fundamental, essential part of these characters, so much so that it just is. And I love that aspect. It just, basketball is, it is what it is. And it is so much to these characters. 
And so it just becomes, uh, it, it becomes uh, second nature. And I like, therefore, how basketball is so uh, integrally uh, intertwined with this particular story, plot, but also the feeling and environment and atmosphere of the, of the work itself. And uh, this also leads to this great conceit about the focus on sport and athletics and how it's not uh, necessarily uh, indistinguishable from uh, one's life or mood or attitude off the court. In other words, I think one of the great conceits of the film or the, one of the great approaches of the film is how it, it's very uh, seemingly effortlessly and really naturally uh, combines these concepts in terms of these characters, Monica and Quincy, because we know basketball is so important to them. We know it is, it is a fund fundamental part of their lives and indeed uh, their extended circle, their family lives to a certain degree as well. And also we understand that it is uh, a primary way for the two characters to actually connect and to interact with each other. And so it's not merely a distinction between the drama that happens on the court and the drama that happens off the court. In fact, and, uh, in fact, and more uh, fundamentally, these two sets of dramas are in fact parallel or they can be said to be one and the same. Or they could be said to be uh, uh, maybe interchangeable or one cannot survive without the other. Indeed, it is what the title says, love and basketball. And then when there is a maybe sense of downtime in one of the lines of drama, then something else picks up in the other line and then vice versa. So there's also this sense of a, of an, of a type of, of a, a, a complementary or supplementary nature in terms of these two fundamental tracks of drama that we see. And I think this is so, this is so key to the characters of, um, of Monica and Quincy and also their close-knit circle, uh, but also it's the sense of just indeed going back to the statement that was made before, basketball is what it is and it's just such a fundamental part of the lives of everyone here that it, it becomes therefore so intertwined and we see this on the screen and also when we see the Criterion supplements we also understand just how fundamentally important it is to the lives of the filmmakers and the people who are affected by or, or making the film and presenting this film. And also indeed in terms of a drama or presentation of story, what a, one of the really beautiful aspects of this uh, interrelationship between the love aspect and the basketball aspect, let, let us say, is uh, I mentioned how they might also be seen to be complementary to each other. In other words, one could also say that one storyline uh, can be seen to stand in for or maybe serve as a metaphor or a type of expression of a different sort of the other storyline. So what do I mean by this? I think one of the really remarkable things about the plot and how well it's structured is it really uses basketball uh, in many ways. It shows us the physical intensity and also the, the type of sacrifice that is required and also the training and practice that is needed as well as the uh, mental focus that is required as well as the pressure of these big time games, these championship games where every shot counts, where every movement uh, uh, that is a foul or that is uh, somehow uh, costing the, the team a, a point or a couple points could mean uh, a win or a loss. And so there is also the feeling of pressure uh, that we see in these wonderful basketball game sequences. But also, there is a real cinematic, poetic quality to the basketball court scenes and how they relate to the characters. So, for example, if we look at the character of Monica, we understand that she has a certain type of temperament in terms of her character, and she expresses this type of temperament maybe sometimes on the court in a more natural way in terms of her character than maybe how she might feel sometimes off the court. In other words, there might be moments where she might feel uh, off the court somewhat shy or somewhat uncomfortable, uh, but then on the court she is also expressing herself while also confronting or dealing with other sets of challenges, of course. But uh, the point that I wanted to bring is much like poetry, much like, say, a song, much like, say, any type of uh, dance or uh, performative art, basketball here serves that same function. In other words, basketball in many ways, in many respects, can be seen in this film to be giving 
give a character the ability to express themselves in ways that maybe they are unable to express themselves in, say, uh, off-court, uh, other quote-unquote real-life situations, non-athletic basketball situations. So whenever there is a drama that's unfolding, maybe there's a sense of shyness, maybe there's a sense of, of communication or inability to communicate with each other. And this comes up in some really key moments, for example, uh, some key moments between uh, Monica and Quincy. Uh, but uh, sometimes when there's uh, an inability to express oneself off the court, that ability to express oneself on the court, how one feels, how one wants to uh, wants to uh, just show something that is being felt within, that is shown on the court, I think, very vividly. And so, therefore, basketball is like song, is like poetry, is like any other type of performative or cinematic art. In other words, it allows a character to express himself or herself in a way that perhaps he or she might not otherwise be able to off the court. So this is, I think, a really beautiful type of dynamic that is established here. Uh, and it really shows the, the, uh, the complexity and cinematic depth uh, to a work like Love and Basketball. And of course, there, it, one of the great strengths too is that it also serves many functions, many levels, many purposes. It can also be seen as a, as I say, a sports-related drama. It can also be seen as a family-related drama. It could also be seen as a romance uh, between these two characters, Monica and Quincy. And also it could be seen maybe against or within all of those contexts, or maybe in a separate context, it could also be seen in terms of a type of nuanced examination of the idea of college athletics, or maybe starting from high school. So um, high school athletics, college athletics, going into professional athletics, and seeing how, especially during this time, uh, the late 90s uh, into the 2000s when this film is made, uh, seeing how different, uh, how the this experience of Monica and the experience of Quincy is quite uh, maybe similar in some ways, but also very different in a lot of ways uh, based on their gender. And this comes up too in terms of, of uh, female athletes and uh, the discussions that are had uh, between and among teammates, in particular, uh, what happens after college athletic life? What happens if one wants to pursue basketball on a professional level? What options are available? And that also becomes part of the conversation, and as I say, in a really subtle nuance, but still very effective and very, I think, uh, a very uh, relevant way. And so for these and other reasons, I think this film operates so, so wonderfully and so effectively. Uh, and it becomes, I think, a great source of entertainment. It becomes this lovely, engaging drama. And uh, this becomes a sports drama as well, filled with tension and suspense. And also there are many themes embedded within it. Uh, and always at the central uh, core of this film is the, the, uh, the uh, intensity and passion uh, and the real earnest and honest uh, feelings and assessments and just uh, the, the, the states of being uh, that we are presented with and that we are uh, privy to when we as viewers watch these stories unfold with respect to the characters, Monica and Quincy, in this really an incredibly well-constructed story and cinema, uh, cinematic experience from the filmmaker Gina Prince Bythewood. This is the work Love and Basketball. The Criterion Collection has released this great film, Love and Basketball, on this new Blu-ray, again on spy number 1097, and purported to be based on a new 4K digital transfer of the work, supervised by writer-director Gina Prince Bythewood, and also including some additional scenes and footage uh, that was uh, cut from the uh, previous release. And so we're getting a very full and robust package that looks and sounds great and part of the package from Criterion as we know from uh, past examples is the inclusion of supplements and certain of these features and so we have so much we have so much in this release it makes it a really great one a standout one from this year 2021 in my view and so what are those supplemental features that we have included with this new great criterion release 
So first off, we have two commentary tracks. And this is a really wonderful. We have two commentary tracks, uh, and they are both described as being from the year 2000. One of the commentary tracks is with Gina Prince Bythewood and Sana Lathan, and the two of them are talking and they are having a wonderful time. There is a lovely, friendly rapport between uh, these two participants, and of course, they are speaking about their experiences on the film and uh, talking about various details of the of certain scenes. There is a key plot element that occurs early on regarding an injury, a facial scar, and this becomes something that is a point of a production detail, a sort of behind-the-scenes detail uh, that is revealed uh, in other parts of the supplements, but also here in this particular commentary from a writer director and uh, one of the stars of the film. So uh, that's an example early on of the the uh, the great uh, anecdotes that are featured on this commentary track. And also they're talking about their backgrounds and uh, Sanaa Lathan for instance talks a little bit about where she came from uh, and how she uh, entered the uh, the world of acting, and also how she could relate in many ways to the character of Monica in particular because uh, she describes herself also as being someone who was uh, very much uh, competitive when it came to, say, athletics and also academics. And so there is this real strong competitive streak that is on display in terms of many of the characters, in particular Monica and Quincy. And I find that, and it's expressed in such a a, a, a almost positive and optimistic way in terms of the film. And so I like how Sana Lathan shares a little bit of her background and her own focus and perspective and how that is very much a part also of who Monica is, the character that she plays, of course. And uh, they talk also a little bit about uh, the way in which basketball is shown and used as uh, not just as a way of life, not just as a plot element, a story structure device, but also in terms of the way in which the film itself is is constructed. And basketball is is used in that way, but also images and sounds of Magic Johnson and uh, the uh, L.A. Lakers. And so this becomes also a very strong, I think, visual motif, a conceit in terms of the, the way in which basketball itself is shown and represented and, uh, and uh, effectuated in the execution of the cinematic work. And also it shows, too, the, the love of uh, basketball that Monica and Quincy have. Uh, and, in and also it shows, too, the links to history because we see the um, uh, the successes and challenges to with regard to the uh, say the professional and personal life of Magic Johnson and this also becomes a way in which this film travels through time and thus traverses the course of history and it and, and it really in a great way in a really uh, fascinating and clever way uh, connects this uh, traversing of history and historical events with basketball through the image and story of Magic Johnson and also how it links to Monica and Quincy's story uh, throughout the course of the film. So, uh, And this is mentioned a little bit in the commentary track and so it's another great reminder of just how effectively basketball is really such an essential part of the lives and the feel and the emotions and, and environment that are presented in this particular work with these characters. And also, there's some great uh, and very informative uh, discussion about the story or the events leading up to Sana Lathan's casting of the film because it wasn't a sure thing. And a lot of the details are, are emerging where uh, there were still some, uh, some, uh, there were some uh, decision making processes that were uh, that needed to uh, uh, that uh, director uh, Gina Prince Bythe would needed to carry out in order to make the decision as to who would play the main character of Monica and this is a very important character obviously because it's one of the central characters but one of the uh, one of the uh, maybe demands or requirements of the particular role uh, it's not just Monica but also Quincy role but one of the 
uh, requirements is uh, not just acting ability, but also an athletic ability as well, because there are many scenes that are many key scenes that are shown on the court with Monica actually playing and uh, needing to have a type of physical uh, resolve and ability to show uh, that uh, she is a and an, uh, not just athletic but very very skilled in terms of her basketball skills and so this required someone who uh, either was a professionally trained actor that could also be a, a, a good ball player or maybe it required casting a, an athlete who maybe was uh, not a professionally trained actor per se, but uh, it would be one of those two choices or one of those two routes. And so Gina prince Bythewood discusses this decision-making process and how it was really uh, it, it was really a challenge too, especially for her because the role of Monica, uh, Gina prince Bythewood explains, is also one that is uh, has elements of her own autobiographical story. And so it, 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 it's a role that's very important, obviously, for everyone concerned, in particular for writer-director uh, Gina prince Bythewood. And so uh, this leads to a really interesting and engaging episode or series of discussions on the commentary track where the two of them talk about how they interacted, who called who, what was the, uh, rehearse, what was the audition process like, etc. And of course, ultimately, uh, the choice was made to go with Sanaa Lathan. And so uh, it's a really interesting and intriguing and wonderful set of stories. And uh, to hear the two of them talk uh, in you know, you know contemporary times at the time of the recording of the commentary track too, there's this wonderful back and forth between them. It's playful, it's witty, there's a lot of uh, 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 lovely jokes exchanged between them. So it's a really lovely time. And so that's another great example of why this commentary track, the first commentary track, is, uh, is really great. So please check out the film with this first commentary track if you haven't done so already. But that's not all because uh, the release also includes a second commentary track. This time it is with Gina Prince Bythewood and editor Terrilyn A. Shropshire and also composer Terence Blanchard. And this is such an, an interesting uh, commentary track as well because what we get is we get the discussions from, say, a technical and editorial standpoint between uh, Gina prince Bythewood and uh, Terrilyn uh, Shropshire and certain uh, choices that needed to be made in the editing room, certain cuts that uh, were demanded in terms of, say, uh, rating uh, uh, and uh, other sorts of uh, marketing uh, concerns of that nature. And some of these uh, editing, uh, say, uh, choices uh, had a lot to do, or there were some instances where it was uh, something to do with, say, the the story of Monica and uh, showing certain uh, maybe uh, maybe tender scenes of intimacy from her perspective, from Monica's perspective, and how this was something very important to uh, the editor and to the writer-director, and how this was in many ways in terms of the editing uh, maybe compromises uh, some of the things that uh, now, hopefully, this release uh, with uh, some additional scenes or additional footage incorporated uh, might help to maybe uh, remedy or rectify. Uh, but in any event, uh, these, this and other examples are, I think, uh, one of the reasons why this second commentary track is so great. Again, we get the artistic uh, perspective and philosophy uh, from Gina Prince Bythewood and also Terrell and Shropshire and how they have this uh, really engaging partnership that we understand also uh, has carried forth over a number of films, not just Love and Basketball. So this is uh, really interesting to see and hear their comments about how their working relationship has changed and has uh, has uh, has developed while at the same time being very much as it always has been. So uh, it's it's lovely to hear their rapport and also it's great to see and hear how they are uh, very much, I think, uh, in a, I say, a very positive way. They often too, or not often, but they uh, once in a while are heard to be really maybe engaging with each other, really talking about, uh, uh, maybe philosophizing or, or um, interpreting uh, the take and sharing their takes, which not which are sometimes the same, but sometimes not the same. And so that leads to even more, I think, uh, uh, that more conversations in terms of how they uh, worked on the film then 
and how they view the film now. So this is, again, more opportunity for fascinating discussion uh, between these artists. And I mentioned those two participants. There's also the third participant of Terence Blanchard, the composer, and hearing his comments about the integration of the music and the choices that, the, uh, that were uh, made in terms of how to layer in uh, certain musical cues in order to heighten or enhance or augment uh, very key uh, dramatic uh, points of the work. This is also very fascinating to, again, from the, uh, the crew or artistic uh, filmmaker uh, and musical perspective. Uh, and this is also combined with the, uh, the comments uh, from the other two participants. And also that's not all too, because the second commentary track, speaking of the music, also has moments where we just get the isolated score or the excerpt of the isolated score over certain scenes. And so uh, it allows us further to enjoy those musical moments uh, that we might have heard comments on uh, from the filmmaker's commentary uh, just a few moments prior. So we get the commentary track, the, uh, the approaches of these filmmakers, and the music and the editing, and then also some moments where we get the isolated score itself. So all in all, I think it's a complete package. So we get these two really full uh, f uh, robust and full of life commentary tracks and so please check out the film with one or with uh, both of the commentary tracks if you can it is so so worth it and that's not all because then we go to the supplements themselves uh, in the sub menu of the criterion release and we have so many so first we have a 2021 uh, maybe documentary uh, making of, which is called Playing for Your Heart, The Making of Love and Basketball. This is approximately 38 minutes. And here we have uh, discussions and interviews and uh, details from uh, Gina prince Bythewood and Omar Epps and Sanal Lathan and Alfre Woodard and uh, Colleen Matsuhara and Reggie Rock Bythewood, etc. And they're talking about the genesis of the film, uh, Gina Prince Bythewood, for instance, talks about her, the 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 steps in her career leading up to the moment where she was able to uh, uh, produce, make this, and also release this film. And so, working in terms of of uh, the producers, um, uh, Spike Lee's involvement, also the writing of the film, and and how it was uh, really part of who she was and how uh, there are some aspects of her own life story that are uh, part of, say, the story of these characters, Monica, um, uh, Quincy, etc. So uh, this is a really wonderful uh, uh, take uh, from uh, writer-director Gina Prince-Bythewood. And also we get comments from Omar Epps and Sanal Lath and talking about the the physicality and also the emotional intensity and the real warmth and earnest nature of the story and script and how they really uh, were uh, drawn to these characters and, and really uh, uh, were attached to these characters. And I mentioned the physicality because each of them too has to show this physicality on the court in terms of basketball scenes, not just in terms of of, of uh, keeping up with the the real uh, demands of the shoot, the uh, the movie shoot itself, uh, in terms of many takes and 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 the like, and also giving a performance uh, as these characters. But as part of that, they have to show uh, basketball skills that are believable and that will enable us, the viewers, to really believe that these are the characters that have these exceptional basketball skills. And so uh, they are talking about how they try to be in the moment, how they train for or practice for these particular scenes and how they, they were really uh, uh, given access, as it were, to the very intense nature of the life of someone who is passionate about basketball and, and about athlet, athletics uh, writ large, athletes, and how uh, this type of mindset was also something that they needed to experience firsthand in order to really get into the hearts and minds and souls of their characters. And so uh, that's a really fascinating aspect of this documentary. And it also leads to discussions too from, uh, for instance, Colleen Matsuhara and uh, talking about how the film uh, dealt with a lot of, of really uh, authentically portrayed basketball scenes and then there are moments where the characters had to be seen uh, you know, falling on the floor and trying to reach for the ball and and how this had to require many many takes etc and so 
uh, and this idea of the film to focusing in on the athletic spirit and the importance of this singular drive that uh, really requires much physical uh, practice and dedication, but very much too emotional and psychological dedication and focus and concentration. And I think uh, that is one of the great strengths of the film. And we see this reflected in a lot of the comments that are contained within this great documentary. So uh, please check this documentary out if you can. Again, it's called Playing for Your Heart, The Making of Love and Basketball. Next is a 16-minute supplement, which is also described as being from 2021. And this is called Editing love and basketball and this is focusing on the work of Terrell A. Shropshire who is also the editor of this work and also a, a partner uh, a, an artistic partner uh, with Gina Prince Bythewood and we understand that they have worked and collaborated on a number of works over the course of their careers and so uh, Terrell and Shropshire talks about what she looks for in a script and talking about uh, the the precision and intensity and demand uh, that uh, comes with the craft of the cinematic art and also the the pleasures and the satisfactions and also the great sort of artistic achievements and triumphs that come with working with an artist like Gina Prince Bythewood and uh, here she talks about the uh, the types of energies that are reflected in the film and how this needed to be preserved and maybe enhanced through certain editing choices. And this is again talking about the scenes on the court and off the court as it were. There's a, a great sense of personal dynamics that are uh, intertwined with the athletic dynamics such that they become almost one and the same in terms of the spirit and emotion and drive of the character arcs of the film. And so uh, Terrell and Shropshire talks for instance about how she needed to edit of course in a certain way some of the editing uh, I'm sorry some of the uh, athletic scenes the uh, the basketball scenes and how she would feel so happy when there would be a an uninterrupted say take of a shot of the ball and it needed to go into the hoop and so maybe sometimes because of the nature of the actual shoot itself sometimes the ball would maybe there would be a take where the ball would go into the hoop or not go into the hoop and that would make all the difference in the world to uh, to her as the editor because then that would mean that would affect some of her editing choices so this is an example of just how much care and precision that she brought to the editing table uh, which really helped to enhance uh, the work overall I mean there are some real uh, powerful moments too uh, in terms of the way for instance going to the basketball scenes how some of the basketball ball scenes are not just shot but also presented and edited uh, because there are some moments of real tension and suspense I and mean, will will they make this the shot or not and they're, it, they're on your the edge and it's really wonderfully crafted in terms of the pacing of the shots and also there are some choices made in terms of of slow motion effect or the way in which the camera or the takes show not necessarily the movement of the ball per se but seeing how the players are reacting to a particular play that is happening on the court so the ball is moving uh, by one player but the camera stays on a particular maybe close-up of the face of a particular uh, uh, player on one end of the court and so the choice of having to the choice of keeping on a particular shot or, or or maybe not going with the ball movement per se, but keeping on a particular player's emotional reaction. This is also part of the editing process. And so uh, this is something that uh, Terrell Shropshire and Gina Prince Bythe would uh, speak about in terms of their, uh, their collaboration, both in terms of love and basketball, and indeed uh, overall in terms of their professional careers. So, uh, and they also talk too about the use and embedding of music too, because music and image and the intertwining of this, this is one of the key aspects of editing and so the way in which uh, certain key songs are shown or incorporated in very very um, uh, critical moments of the work and the choices that were made uh, there's a particular song called fool of me that is spoken of as an example it's a really great song and it's a really great use of the song in the film a really important scene too and they talk about the importance of this and how uh, this is again another aspect or reflection of editing and the integration of sound and image which is again part of the editing process or one of the aspects of editing so a uh, really wonderful 
uh, set of comments here from this uh, um, in this particular supplement. Again, it's called Editing Love and Basketball. It's approximately 16 minutes. And that's not all because then we get another supplement which is called Athletes and Artists and Love and Basketball from 2021. This is also, uh, this is approximately 22 minutes. And this is a three-way conversation uh, like Zoom or online conversation among Gina Prince Bythewood and Lena Waite and Cheryl Swoops. And so this is wonderful because we get to the uh, the perspective of people who are in the world of athletics and also the uh, professional world of, of media and entertainment and also how this film and the stories that are shown in this film and that the, the, the effect of this film has and still has on people who are watching it and are fans and and who really love this film and love the story of Quincy and Monica. And so, for for example, uh, Cheryl Swoops, who shares her experiences as a professional athlete, as a professional basketball player, and how uh, it, as an athlete, and she, uh, she expresses or reveals how it's very much also uh, the psychological games, which is also the, the strengths uh, uh, and this is one of the aspects of being a professional athlete. You know how it, how one shows one's skill on the court, and uh, the the uh, the athletic and physical acumen that one has as a player, and also the psychological uh, way in which one protects oneself, and also one maybe ha- tries to have an edge over the other players. And this this is shown too in terms of of what Cheryl Swoops talks about in terms of swagger and. Uh, physical demeanor, and this is such an important point too, because the the life of an athlete uh, is revealed here to be not just about the the um, uh, the results on court, but also the lifestyle and the way in which people talk to each other and size one up and try to uh, get a even that slightest, say, psychological advantage over one's opponent on the court. And so uh, this is really important, and I I really admire uh, comments like this, especially from my vantage point. I'm not an athlete. I'm not a professional athlete at all. So getting this sense is very important. And also it's reflective, too, of of, uh, the film itself, Love and Basketball, because we see these moments of one player trying to one-up another player trying to get a little bit of a psychological edge on another player just in these little character moments on the court maybe there's a little bit of a of a of a physical uh, maybe nudge of the shoulder or maybe there's a little word exchanged here there's a look in the eye uh, eye contact etc so this is all part of that overall story or presentation of the athlete so this is great comment and also Cheryl Swoops talks too about the uh, the idea or the story of female athletes and uh, in terms of uh, college and also in professional athletic life and the WNBA. And so this is also very much part of the story that's part of not just Monica's story, but also all the female athletes that are part of this film, Love and Basketball. And we are reminded that this is also a reflection of the real life stories of athletes like Cheryl Swoops and other people like her. And so uh, this film therefore becomes a very important type of, of uh, inspirational hallmark uh, uh, touchstone film uh, that shows these stories. And again, it's showing them in a very honest way and it's showing them in a way that still uh, shows the, the, the optimism and the hope that is accompanying stories like this. So, And also uh, paralleling this is uh, great comments from Lena Waith as well, talking about her perspective in terms of her profession and how this idea of athleticism and athlete and uh, professional uh, athletic life is about to uh, presentation and precision and, uh, and perfection and how this is so important in terms of one's own, say, career and advancement and professional and personal satisfaction. Uh, and so this is uh, so such a great series of conversations. And then Gina Burns bythewood talking about uh, how these their stories inspired her and indeed how her story inspired the two of them. And so it becomes this wonderful collaborative uh, uh, a positive conversation between and among them and also stick around to the end because there's a wonderful detail about a glass cup that is shown in such a wonderful way to end this uh, this 
conversation, such a heartwarming, tender, and very informative, and a very inspiring conversation among these three participants. Again, approximately 22 minutes. Athletes and artists and love and basketball. And that's not all in terms of the supplements, because we also have a section devoted to deleted scenes with optional commentary by Gina prince Bythewood and Terrell in Shropshire. And this totals approximately eight minutes. And so we have a total of eight minutes. And uh, in that eight minute running time, we have a total of eight scenes that are purported to be deleted scenes. And so these scenes are, uh, or can be described as being, uh, the first being Zeke playing, uh, playing basketball with Quincy there as well. And then the next scene being Monica and mom in the kitchen. And the third scene being Monica in the car with her date. Uh, and then the fourth scene being the USC coach's speech. And then the fifth scene being uh, this moment after Monica leaves Quincy uh, in a particular key moment of the film. Uh, and then the sixth scene being uh, the moment where we see Monica in uh, being introduced in the starting spot of the game of a particular game and the seventh scene being a moment after uh, a key moment again where uh, the coach speaks with monica privately and then we see the, the little bit of what happens after immediately after that moment and then the eighth scene being a uh, scene between omar epps and uh, tyra banks and so uh, showing a little bit about uh, her character as well, because she also plays a, a supporting but still very key role, in particular in the story of the uh, of Quincy. So these are the eight scenes, and we have the optional commentary track from uh, Gina Prince Bythewood and Terrell in Shropshire, speaking about what the scene was, what it represents, and ultimately what were the reasons behind not including them in the final cut. So, but it's really great to have this as an inclusion again because we see a little bit more of the of, of the uh, of, of these these lives essentially of these particular uh, characters. For example, take the first scene. Uh, we see Zeke the father and we see him actually playing on the court. Uh, there are of course uh, many scenes involving uh, Quincy and Zeke off the court and their father-son relationship, which is a, a, the key, one of the key aspects of the Quincy storyline character. But a deleted scene like this where we actually see uh, the father playing on the court because we know that his story is also that he is a, uh, a pro ball player. And also this is a very important component of his relationship with Quincy, who's also on the court as well. So this is a, another great uh, character development or, or a part of his character that's shown in this brief moment even though it's not part of the final version of the film it's nice to have it as far as these deleted scenes are concerned so uh, please check it out if you can and totaling approximately eight minutes and then uh, the supplements continue on with a feature approximately nine minutes and this is described as being from 1998 and these are the audition tapes and these are the audition tapes uh, that are between or of certain scenes between uh, Omar Epps and Sanaa Lathan, and also uh, Kyla Pratt and Glendon Chapman, who play the the uh, younger Monica and the younger uh, Quincy uh, in the uh, first part of the film. And so we see the audition tapes between uh, these uh, actors, respectively. And so it's nice to see the, the say, the character development, or uh, maybe not character development is not the right way to put it. Maybe it should be like the the chemistry between the actors and seeing how they uh, play off of each other, their energy that they give in terms of their performance, how uh, their performances also are dependent on the performance of the other. And they have this wonderful rapport, uh, these two sets of actors. And this is so key because we need to believe as viewers the intensity and warmth and the sincerity of this particular relationship because this is the key relationship of the film. If this doesn't succeed, then the the whole film uh, might also topple. But the strength of the success of these performances, I think, is due in part to, again, the strength of the performances themselves uh, in terms of the the uh, the children and also the uh, Omar Epps and Sanal Lathan, but also in terms of how their dynamics are and how their, uh, their screen chemistry is. And it 
works so well in terms of the, the childhood story component as well as the young adult and adulthood components of the story. So, and we see that uh, immediately in these audition tapes. So it's wonderful to see this audition uh, tape section. Again, the chemistry is in particular what's, uh, what was mentioned too in terms of one of the key components of the decision behind casting Sanaa Lathan to begin with. And so uh, that chemistry that she has with Omar Epps, it's so evident when you see these audition tapes. So it's wonderful to have this as a, as a type of uh, uh, a part of the uh, exploration of this work. So bravo for being able to include this. Uh, please check it out if you can. And that's not all, because then we get a section which is devoted to short films of Gina Prince Bythewood. Uh, so we have two short films, and preceding that, we have a brief introduction from uh, the writer director herself. So uh, the introduction is approximately three minutes, and here she is talking about the experiences that she had with, in film school, uh, UCLA. Uh, talking about her thesis work, Stitches, which is one of the shorts that's included here, and also talking about the other short, which is Progress, and uh, in terms of the way in which history is linked in a very, uh, very powerful way in terms of violence and uh, how uh, uh, violence seems to be uh, very much, unfortunately, uh, the, uh, the the focus of a lot of the stories, again, the stories that is part of the focus of the film progress. And so uh, here she is giving a very, I think, uh, informative and wonderful description of the reasons behind making these two particular short films. And that leads us to the short films themselves. So the first of which being the work which is called Stitches. And this is described as being from 1991 approximately 31 minutes total. And uh, this stars Taryn Cavies Patton and Ronald W. Lawrence and others. And it's a very fascinating tale. And it's dealing with family dynamics. It's dealing with some kind of emotional or psychological trauma. It's also dealing with relationships. It's also dealing with how this particular main character uses her stand-up comedy as a means to try to maybe present her own story or to maybe shield herself from the pain and hurt that is revealed that she has somehow or other endured or gone through or experienced uh, from a very young age. And so uh, this is, I think, a, a very well-told tale, expertly told, with very powerful performances. It's also described by Gina Prince Bythewood as being a, a, a very dark, uh, very almost um, uh, almost a tragic type of tale. And so it's an interesting contrast, if you will, and Gina Prince Bythewood, excuse me, Gina Prince Bythewood, excuse me, mentions this as well about how this might serve also as a type of contrast to the tone and the perspective that's shown in a film like Love and Basketball. That's not to say that a film like Love and Basketball doesn't have its share of sad or tragic notes. It certainly does, but maybe when compared to the the overall trajectory of a work like Stitches, it's a really interesting contrast in terms of, of the types of different uh, uh, tones and notes that Gina Prince Bythewood is able to capture uh, throughout her entire filmography, both in terms of her feature film work and now in her short film work, in a work like Stitches. So this is a, a great example. Uh, and it's, as I say, it's really well put together. It's, it has a flow that feels professional. It has a sense of, of a real depth of performance. And again, the performances are really key because we're really going into the psychological uh, the psychological uh, states of being of these main characters and how this in some form or another uh, leads them to make the various choices that they make in the uh, in sort of the present day aspect of the film as it were so uh, really well done uh, it's a well, it's a really great short film and it's also showing the skill and expertise and craft of the powerful artistry of Gina Prince Bythewood. So this is a great film to watch. Please check it out if you can. Because that's not all, because then we have another short work, this time from 1997. And this is a work which is called Progress. 
a two-minute work. And within the scope of these two minutes, Gina Prince Bythewood uh, does uh, something really quite extraordinary and powerful. She presents a type of statement or perhaps even an indictment, focusing in on two moments of history, one being from 1967 and the other being from 1997. And again, against the context of, of uh, culture and society and history, in particular, uh, United States, uh, latter half of the United States uh, history in the latter half of the 20th century, and in particular in the context of civil rights. And when one thinks about the, the social and historical progress of something like the civil rights movement of uh, the United States in the latter half of the 20th century, there are still anecdotes and stories and circumstances and situations that are again part of the, the essence of a work like Progress that show indeed that as much as things might have, uh, might have changed, there are still many things that sadly and unfortunately and tragically uh, remain unchanged. And so therein lies, I think, the direct powerful message and indeed ironic message of uh, work like Progress, another extraordinary achievement from Gina Prince Bythewood. And it's great that it's included here. Again, it shows uh, yet another aspect of her career and her professional uh, and cinematic perspective. And it's wonderful. So please check it out if you can. And then the supplements are rounded out with a great trailer, so uh, please check out the trailer as well. Uh, and then that's not all, because a part of the release also includes the uh, the insert, and it's one of the fold-out types. And as uh, some of you may know, I'm not a big fan of the fold-out type, uh, but uh, this is okay because, uh, as with other Criterion releases, we get an essay. This is called For Your Heart by Roxane Gay. And this is a great essay. Uh, it's The essay focuses in on the career of Gina Prince Bythewood and the context of love and basketball, the specific themes that are contemporary to the time that the film was made, but also relevant to now when this Criterion Collection release is being made as well. And so it hits all those notes and it hits all those beats so well and so accurately and so, I think, uh, effectively. It's one, another great essay. So please check out the essay For Your Heart. Uh, if you can. Uh, ideally, maybe after you have seen the film, uh, because I think uh, reading an essay like this and other essays, uh, it, I think helps to watch the film first and then read it. But once you've seen the film, please again check out the essay. It's called For Your Heart. And so, my friends, this is the Criterion release of Love and Basketball. A great, great introduction of the films of Gina Prince Bythewood into the Criterion Collection physical media catalog. We have the feature film. We also have her short works that are featured as part of the supplemental package. Uh, and then we have this I think, multifaceted and wonderfully rich and complex and entertaining story or set of stories uh, that is what the title says, right? After all, all's fair in love and basketball. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. And so until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well, and please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much, as always, for your time. I very, very much appreciate it. Stay strong, stay safe, and cheers. Mm -hmm.